Hey y'all, so this is Editing Lillian. Um, this video is super late, I'm sorry. I actually filmed at the same time as I did the other video, but it took me quite a while to edit because of my qualifying exams and then I just kind of forgot about it. So thank you to the person that pointed out that I still had one more part to do. I quickly edited this just to get it up. And so yeah, this is part two of my Habitica video. Thanks for watching. So now I'm gonna go into the more gaming aspects of Habitica, which make it super fun. So as you can tell, when I completed a task, so for example, I get a trivial to do, I get some gold, mana experience, and I get some damage to the boss. Sometimes I even get items. So let's go down to items. These are all items that I've acquired. And the reason I love this is because I'm very into collecting. I think for me, that's one of the aspects of Habitica that really keeps me checking in every day is the items aspect of it. So I already have a bunch of eggs and potions, but this is kind of like Neopets where you can, you know, collect a bunch of eggs and you have a bunch of potions and you can paint those eggs colors uh, so that you hatch a pet of that type. Um, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, you also get food to feed your pets. There are special aspects, and then there are also quests that you can play with your party members. You can also get equipment. Depending on your class, you can get some equipment. And the nice thing is there is a difference between equipment that you have equipped. So for example, my main on-hand item has, you know, these stats. For example, I get plus 16 constitution. Um, this one plus 16 strength plus 25 strength, plus 25 intelligence, plus 27 perception, etc. But it's like Maple Story as well in that you can have these equipments that probably look super ugly <laughs> when they're all in combination, but you can also get stuff that you use a, as a costume, which you just think looks really good. So this is the stuff I have now. Um, obviously it doesn't get me anything additional, so that's kind of why I have it, didn't have it equipped as equipment. So you have a bunch of different ways to customize, and I really appreciate that. Now on to one of my favorite parts of Habitica, which is the stable. Like I said, I love collecting things, and especially things that involve pets. So, as you can tell, these are my pets. Um, there are 90 standard pets that you can get, so there's different categories. There's nine. There's like wolf, tiger cub, panda, lion, fox, pig, dragon, cactus, and bear. And for each one, there's a different color type. And when you first start Habitica, you are limited to how you can feed these animals based on what how, what potion you hatch them with. So for example, this was the shade potion, and I can only feed this wolf um, shade foods. Normally when you haven't fed the pets all the way like I have, what it actually looks like is you have these bars right here, which indicate that these are hungry and ready to eat. These are magic potions, they're just different kinds of pets. And so these magic potion pets can eat whatever they want, so I'll just feed them real quick. And what you can tell is that that bar is growing and growing, and you can feed this animal all the way until it becomes a mount. Let's see if I can, there we go. And so now you see that peppermint wolf became gray, and instead, if you go to mount, peppermint wolf has now become a mount. So what does this actually mean? In terms of your avatar, as you can tell, I have two wolves here, <laughs> not wolves, sorry, whales. And this little pet right here is a pet. And this big one is a mount. I got these in quest, so that's why they're not part of like the standard ones, but that is what they are. So it's really just good for designing your avatar, I suppose. There are these magic potions that you can buy for the other currency, which is gems. Um, you can either buy those with real money or as a subscriber, or if you contribute to Habitica, because it's open source, you can get gems as well. And I like being able to still feed those. I'm very far away. And these happy, these potions um, are yearly. So, you know, I can't just do it all immediately. And so, yeah. This is pretty much my favorite part of Habitica, but now on to my second favorite part of Habitica, which is the party. As I mentioned, there are shops, there are things you can buy, etc. but the party. 
And so for those of you who don't play video games, a party is usually a group of people that you go on quests with. And for me, I have these two party members right here. Um, that's where you may have noticed that there are these two random people. They're my party members. There are three of us in our party. And as you can tell here, we are fighting a boss. So the way to fight a boss is you pick a quest and we are currently fighting a very long boss. I believe we fought this boss for a month. Every time you complete a task, you attack the boss. And every time you don't complete a daily, the boss attacks you. So as you can tell over here, um, I attacked this boss for nine damage, which means I did nine damage worth of tasks, which is calculated by the difficulty of the task. And then I did all of my dailies for that day, so my party members didn't get hit. And so that's an accountability thing where, you know, you want to complete your dailies so that your party members aren't affected by you not completing your task. Of course, it's okay if you don't sometimes. Um, my party's pretty open about that, but yeah. And so the nice thing too, as you can tell, is this isn't just action, but you can actually have discussions with your party members. And I really enjoy these discussions because it's nice to feel like Habitica isn't a lonely place, but there are other people who are in it with me. Next, there's this other social part to Habitica, which are guilds. So guilds are kind of like parties, but for everyone, anyone can join a guild and they're usually themed. Um, first, when you click on guild, you go, you'll go to the tavern, which the tavern's the most social part of Habitica, in my opinion, where you can talk to literally anyone on Habitica and just answer like, you know, kind of like a status update on Twitter or something like, I am I finished studying a chapter, shout out to Fire Moon Lily, who I don't know, but you posted that, so now you're in my video. And another cool thing is if you're having a hard time or you need to take some time off or you're on vacation, you can actually pause the damage that you get so that you're missing you know, your dailies and stuff doesn't affect you, your tasks won't change color, your bosses won't do damage, and you, you, if you do things, I think it still damages the boss, but it will only do the damage when you come back. And so there's that. And then there are guilds. So these are, like I said, guilds open to everyone. So it looks like the most joined guild is Habitica Help, asking a question. So I can go to this guild. I'm not going to join it, but you can join it if you'd like. And this is a guild which helps um, give users a dedicated space to ask questions about Habitica. So th this guild is so big that you're not going to get notifications. But here are people who are probably just helping each other out with Habitica, which is awesome. I am a part of some guilds, such as the Scholars, which is helpful for people who just really love learning. Um, and also, I was a part of a New Year's Resolution guild. I think I'm still part of it. I don't really post that- these are my guilds. I don't really post that much on guilds anymore because I find that I have less and less free time. But the official New Year's Resolution guild is actually, you know, the first time I talked about my YouTube channel and my goal to learn how to edit videos and so it was really awesome to have people you know tune in on my journey and give me feedback which i really appreciated as you can tell i'm in a bunch of other guilds because i either like the resources they give for example the adhders guild has some great resources over in the sidebar so if you have adhd as well here are some great things um but again i've kind of stopped having time for things like that and i think a guild that is going to become important to me later is there's one that is for graduate students that is kind of accountability to get you writing and so something that comes with guilds is actually like I showed you before challenges so you can have a challenge either through your party or through a guild or through just challenges that are around Habitica in general so let's go to challenges or discover challenges I don't think I'm in any challenges right now that aren't for my party. And so what you can see is that if you complete a challenge and you're declared the winner by however means that's declared, you can get a challenge prize. And that challenge prize more than not is gems, which allows you to get those more exclusive items of Habitica. So for example, if you have one where you're trying to 
you know, if you're looking for a task where you stretch every day and you want to see what that challenge looks like, so um, you really want to go in that direction, what you see is this task has a daily where you spend 10 minutes every day stretching. So this is probably one of the most simple challenges I've ever seen. Um, there are 109 participants and you can actually view the progress of every participant, which is cool. I'm not trying to stretch every day yet, but there are other things. I, what is this? This is cool. Avatar the Last Airbender, master of all four elements. What do they want us to do? Practice principles of each nation. Ah, uh, here we go. This is more like what you would see. So this is why I don't do many challenges. It can be kind of overwhelming for me personally, but if you are one of those people, you know, I, I recommend having just one challenge going at a time if you want a challenge going. Um, and so, you know, you have water bending, fire bending, etc. I actually think it's really cool the way they're doing this, reading, it's kind of like Ravenclaw, um, make a checklist for this daily with at least four different exercises, etc. And then you have to do's. So that means like, you know, tasks to do that are specific to this challenge. So they only have those two. And so, as you can tell, it's super exciting to see all these challenges, but you also can get overwhelmed very quickly if you're not careful. Um, I remember when I first joined Habitica, I just like racked up a bunch of challenges and I was on vacation, so I actually started doing some, but then once I started my PhD program, that was not happening. So that's really cool. And so I love Habitica for that reason. The other reason I love it, like I alluded to before, is it's open source. So if you want to contribute to Habitica in some way or you want to make it better, you absolutely can. And there is an entire guild, I believe, specifically to people who are devoted to making Habitica better. And so there are a few things I didn't touch on. For example, groups. I don't know too much about this, but this is like if you want to upgrade um, you can get like team-based tasks, group management controls, and in-game benefits. Yeah, so there's a subscription that you get and it allows you to do team-based things. Um, I don't personally have like a team that's on Habitica, but I could absolutely see why this would be very efficient if you are a team who, you know, is very video game motivated. It seems, and you have a project together, that seems like it'd be awesome. And I believe I got a message from Sasakles. Very cool channel, thank you. I appreciate that. So shout out to you, Sasakles. Thanks for watching my channel. And as you can tell, there's this very social side to Habitica, which is really awesome, but you can make it what you want it to be. If you don't wanna have any of these social components, you can just stick to the tasks. I'm just gonna delete this to do because I'm not actually going to reward myself for this. Um, same with this. But there's so much that you can do on Habitica. You can tailor it to yourself. If you don't care about a certain part, no one's gonna force you to care about it, you know? And that's what I really like is that while there are, these features are available, they're not overwhelming like they are in many to-dos. And just this idea of accountability where you know, you, I mean, you can drop off the face of the earth, but if you just neglect your tasks and stuff, other people are going to be aware of it. I, it's really nice to have that accountability. You can even, of course, do this with people you know in real life as a method of accountability if, you know, just random people on the internet's not your thing. Thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you found merit in the way I organize my Habitica so you can see that you don't necessarily have to take advantage of everything. Um, just customize it to what works best for you. I encourage you to experiment for a little while and see what gets you going. So. Are you a Habitica user? If so, I'm really curious as to how you set up your habits, dailies, to-dos, and rewards. Are there certain things you don't use at all and certain things you use all the time? What does your setup look like, etc.? I'm curious. If you found this video helpful in any way, please like the video and please subscribe. I'm very committed to posting ways for us all to improve our lives and Habitica has just been that thing for me. So I'd love to have you all follow my journey and hear how you improve all of your lives. Thank you all for watching and I hope you all have a lovely and productive year ahead of you.